subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hi, learners. You are welcome once again to Senior High School, our on Joy Learning channel. This lesson, we want to look at very important aspect of chemistry. It's all about calculation. Mathematics, very, very interesting. Every day, every hour, every second, every minute, we do mathematics. Our very working is all mathematics. My name is Wisdom Agbesinyal. And of course, many call me Wizzy One. If you enjoy mathematics, then it is your time. Follow me and let's unravel the mystery of chemistry. To begin with, we want to look at molar quantities. We are talking about quantities. Yes, we want to quantify things. You go to the market, you, you, you go to the meat seller, you weigh two kilos, they, they will weigh for you. You pay for it. When I say I want to give you a gift, I want to buy a dozen of handkerchiefs for you. How many pieces of handkerchiefs are you expecting? Twelve. Okay, you don't want handkerchiefs, but you want a crate. You would like Coke, you drink Coke a lot, but don't drink Coke too much because it is not good for you. So I want to buy for you a crate of Coke. How many are you expecting? 24 bottles. Wow. Okay. That is everyday life. Let's come back to chemistry. When we also talk about quantities, then we talk about the molar quantities. What at all is it? So at the end of the lesson, we should be able to define molar quantities. We should be able to give examples of molar quantities. But there is something missing. Watch. Here we say molar. It means that it's coming from somewhere. The molar here is an adjective. So where is it coming from? It's from the molar. Eh, more, yes. So, what then is the more? So, you want to define the more, and then the more is just a unit of a physical quantity called amount of substance. So, we have to also define amount of substance and define what the more is, just as we have. A crate of coke containing 24 bottles. So is it also the more also measures number of quantities in a given substance. So we define the amount of substance. We say it is the measure. Yes, we are measuring. We talk about the meat now. So let's also measure in chemistry. So we are measuring. So the measure of the amount of entities, you know already that the entities can be atoms, can be molecules, can be ions, can be electrons, and so on, present in a given substance. And of course, the unit, it is expressed in moles. So the amount of substance is represented with a variable n. So that any time I say n equal to 0 0.152, then the unit must come more. Please follow carefully. So in a question, wherever you see the unit more, that is the amount of substance you are measuring. What then is the more? The more of any substance contains the same number of entities as the number of atoms containing 12 grams of the carbon-12 isotope. 
So anytime I mention 12 grams of carbon 12 isotope, there are number of entities. It can be atoms and so on and so forth. Please follow carefully. So now, we now know the more. Then we say molar quantities. Molar quantities. What are they? The mole and then molar. The molar now has become an adjective describing quantities. So what is it? So anytime we measure any substance per mole of the substance, that is molar quantity. So if I measure Kwame per mole, it means Kwame is a molar quantity. If I measure with the one per mole, it means that with the one is a molar quantity. From there, we should be able to give examples of molar quantities. Number one is the molar mass. Molar mass. The symbol is uppercase M. And then, of course, it has the unit grams per mole. It means that we are measuring the mass per mole. So molar mass is a molar quantity. The second one on our list is molar gas volume. We are talking about volume and the unit for volume it's in dm cubed. So if we measure the volume of a gas per mole, that is a molar quantity. The next one is Avogadro's constant. The symbol there is either L or N sub A, and it is entities per mole. And don't forget, per is one. So entities, the entities can be atoms, molecules, ions, and so on. The other one is Faraday constant, and it's represented as F, and it is coulombs per mole, molar quantity. Molar gas constant R, joule per Kelvin per mole, molar quantity. Molar enthalpy of reaction, Delta H sub reaction. Well, we have shortened the reaction to be Rxn. Joule per mole. Per mole. It's a molar quantity. The Faraday's constant, we are going to look at it in electrolytic cells that is under electrochemistry so when you get there you meet the faraday constant then the molar gas constant you meet it under state of matter when you are doing some calculations on pressure and so on and so forth volumes amount of substance temperature and so on and so forth then the molar enthalpy of reaction we meet it under energy and energy changes. But for the purposes of today, we are only going to look at three of the such quantities. We talk about molar mass, we talk about molar gas volume, then we talk about Avogadro constant. Please follow carefully. Because we, we talk about mathematics quantity, quantifying chemical species. So let's look at them one after the other because we're going to do some simple, simple calculations there. And this is the time to learn it to prepare you for other things. Take note, this topic is very, very important because it will help you in volumetric analysis. So we are killing two birds with one stone. Follow carefully. 
so that when you get it from here, when you get to the lab volumetric analysis, it will be oh, a walkover. Molar mass. I have given three definitions here for you to choose from. So choose the one you can easily handle, you can easily recall. So that when you are even sleeping and somebody wakes you up, Kofi, wake up. What is molar mass? You just give it to the person and we are gone. So what is molar mass? Mass of one mole of a substance. Mass of one mole of a substance. The second one, sum of the atomic masses of the atoms in a substance. And of course, it is measured in grams per mole. Last one, mass of a substance containing Avogadro constant. And the Avogadro constant is 6.02 times 10 power 23 entities. And don't forget, the entities can be atoms, molecules, ions, and so on. So follow. Okay, I'll not tell you this is the formula for molar mass like that. No. But from the definition, we can deduce our own formula, working formula. So look at it. The unit for molar mass is grams per mole. So the grams there is the unit of the physical quantity mass. M. Small m. Then the mole there is the physical quantity amount of substance, so N. So M on N. Follow carefully. So that is molar mass. So molar mass, you represent it with capital M. So molar mass is equal to M, that is mass on amount of substance or number of moles. So if I want to make amount of substance the subject, I'm going to have, so this implies N equal to M on molar mass. So this is our working formula. Is it not interesting? Yes, you don't have to memorize it. Just from the unit of molar mass, you deduce your working formula to work with. Okay, if that is the case, I said already we are quantifying. So let's quantify. And the second definition says some of the atomic masses of the atoms making up a substance. So if we are asked to calculate molar mass, it's so simple. Let's look at it. Very, very simple. So let me take off this. So let's try a very simple one. Our very good friend, water. Water, H2O. Let's find the molar mass of water. Water is in our homes. We drink it. I drank some a while ago. So let's find its molar mass. The next thing is we say sum of the atomic masses. So the next question we want to ask ourselves, what is the atomic mass of hydrogen? What is the atomic mass of oxygen? Oh, so atomic mass of hydrogen is 1, and then that of oxygen is 16. And we said that the sum of atomic masses of the atoms making up the substance. So here, water, we have hydrogen and we have oxygen. So let's sum up. For hydrogen, we have two of the hydrogen atoms. So twice the atomic mass. Therefore, two times one. So I have two times one. Oxygen. We have one there. So 16 times one. So if we add, we are going to have 
2 times 1 to be 2, 16 times 1 to be 16, so 16 times 2 will give us, we are right, 18. What is the unit? Don't forget, grams per mole. That is why molar mass is a molar quantity. So attach that. Take note, I like grams mol power negative 1. You can also write it as grams forward slash mol. But don't use the two at the same time. When you use the two at the same time, please, you are wrong. And when you have a wrong unit, you, your evaluated value is also wrong. So if I say 18 grams forward slash mol power negative 1, please this one is wrong. It's the same as grams mole, which is a wrong unit for molar mass. Therefore, your value will also be wrong. It is a scientific measurement. The quantity with the right unit attached. Yes. Okay. Can we continue? Let's continue. Right. Let's look at another one. Common salt. Sodium chloride. In your home. You ate some already. This morning. Maybe this afternoon. I've eaten some. Isn't it? So let's see. It's in your home. So you can go grab it. Look at it. Look at its nature. You can taste it and so on. You can prepare a solution and so on and so forth. Okay. Sodium chloride. The next. What is the formula for sodium chloride? NaCl, yes. So NaCl. The next question: What is the atomic mass of sodium? What is the atomic mass of chlorine? Yes. So box bracket Na equal to twenty-three, and then Cl equal to thirty-five point five. Our question is: so What are we looking for? Molar mass of sodium chloride okay so i can big m of nacl equal to na only one is in there so one times the atomic mass relative atomic mass 23 so 23 plus chlorine how many atoms are there one so, 1 times atomic mass of chlorine relative times 35.5. So, you sum up, it's going to be 58.5 grams per mole. Are we okay? Yes. Can we do another one? Yes. So, let's do another one. Give me a substance. Okay, H2SO4. Thank you. So determine the molar mass of A2SO4. Atomic masses. H. How many atoms of H in A2SO4? Two. So two. What is the atomic mass of H? One. So times one. S equal to. How many? One. Relative atomic mass of S? 32. Oh, how many? Whoa, four. So four times relative atomic mass? 16. Right. So simple. Two times one, two, 32, then 64. Add everything will give you 98. Units, grams. Per mole. It's not simple. Very, very simple. This one you can even close your eyes and get it done. Shall we try another one? Yes. Let's try another one. Okay. So let me take off this.
And look at this one. What is the molar mass of NH4 into bracket 2 SO4? Atomic relative atomic masses. H is 1. N, 14. S, 32. O, 16. What should we do? Yes. NH4 is in bracket. So it means that the 2, the sub 2 there is affecting everything in the bracket. Don't forget that. So if that is the case, I can determine the mass of NH4 multiplied by 2 and then add it to the SO4. Or I can pick them one after the other. Picking the one after the other, I have H. How many? 4 is inside the bracket. Then there is sub 2. So 4 times 2. That will give me 8. But the relative atomic mass of H is 1. So 1 times 8. There is N there. N, 1 is in the bracket. But there is sub 2 there. So 2. Relative atomic mass, 14 times 2. Then of course, S is only 1. So 32 times 1. Oxygen is 4. So 16 times 4. So let's sum up. We have 8, we have 28, we have 32, then we have 64. So if you add everything together, what will it be? Where is your calculator? If you are not there with your calculator, you are just watching me. No! Get involved! There's a Chinese proverb that says that when you tell me, I will forget. So if you are there, you are only hearing my voice or listening to my voice, you will forget. But if you show me, I'll remember. So as you are watching it, you will remember. But if you involve me, I will understand. So if you want to understand, then get involved. Go grab your calculator and let's do this together. Is that okay? Yes. So go for your calculator and let's do it together. I have my own here. Look at it. Yes. So let's do it together. So add up everything there. If you are ready with your calculator, add it up. 8 plus 28 plus 32 plus 64. That will give me, whoa, what did you get? 1, 3, 2. Excellent. So 132. Of course, right unit, grams per mole. Simple. So you should be able to calculate molar mass when the need arises. Okay, what did we do? We had a working formula. So let's Look at the working formula. We have established that N, that is amount of substance equal to mass on molar mass. So now that we know how to calculate molar mass, it means that if we know the other variable, we should calculate for the third one because it is a three-lettered uh, formula, working formula. Okay, so let's see. What is the number of moles contained in 24 grams of Na2CO3 relative atomic masses 
we have n equal to 23, c equal to 12, and then o equal to 16. What do we do? What is the question asking us to do? We should calculate the number of moles of Na2CO3. What do we know already? Oh, I know the working formula. N equal to M on big M. Eh? What else do I know? I know the mass. It's given 24 grams. So mass equal to 24 grams. What else do I need? Can I calculate the molar mass of N2CO3? Yes. Okay. So molar mass of N to CO3 equal to 106 grams per mole. <laughs> oh, our problem is solved. How? I have a working formula. So now I know mass, I know molar mass. I can do substitution. Therefore, N equal to M on molar mass equal to mass 24 on molar mass 106. So 106. That gives me, yes, bring your calculators. Once divided by that should give me that. So 24 on 106 equal to that. You got it? What did you get? 0 0.226. That's correct. So 0 0.226. What's the unit? Moles. Uh-huh. So, substitution, one there, evaluation, one there, molar mass, one there. So, you have three marks for this question. Did you get all the three? Okay, congrats. Can we do another one? Yes. Yes. Okay, so, let's do another one. Give me a substance. Give me a value. Okay. So determine the number of moles in. Give me a value. Okay. 15.8 grams. Of give me a substance. Okay. CaCl2. Thank you. Relative atomic mass. Ca equal to 40. Cl equal to 35.5. Are you there? This one, you have given me everything. So it means that you should be able to get it without sweat. What do I have? I've been given mass. Yes. So mass of CaCl2 equal to 15.8. You give that value. Okay. Molar mass of CaCl2 equal to, uh huh. Look at it and give me answer. We have 40 times 71. That will give us 7 plus 4. That will be 11. Isn't it? So, one, one, one grams per mole. Working formula, N equal to mass on molar mass. Oh, what an interesting mathematics. We are quantifying chemical species. So, mathematics, hmm? mass, 15.8 divided by one, one, one. Yep, what did you get? 15.8 on 111. What's that? What did you get? Three significant figures. What did you get? 0 0.142. Great. Yep, 0 0.142. Unit more. So as usual, molar mass one, substitution one, evaluation one. Three for this question. You can't afford to lose this. Is that okay? Yes, on the other way, we have a three variable formula. So we have been 
calculating for n, small n. Can we find mass 2? Yes. Okay. Now let's look at that one too. Okay. So now let's find the mass. Give me a substance. Sodium hydroxide. Okay. The mass of NaOH is no no. You say we want well, let's calculate for mass. So we have to give number of moles. Okay. So let's take out that one. Is that okay? Uh, we have done for amount of substance enough. So let's do for mass. Okay, so let's go for mass. So you have given me the substance sodium hydroxide. Now give me the value for N. 0 0.128 mole. Okay. The number of moles of NaOH is 0 0.128. Is that okay? Yes. What are we looking for? We want mass. Ah, so if we want mass, what do we need? We need molar mass. Therefore, we must provide relative atomic masses of the atoms. So N, N equals 23, O is 16, H equal to 1. Okay, we can calculate molar mass. So molar mass of sodium hydroxide equal to 23 plus 16 plus 1. So 17 plus 23, that will give you 40. Okay. So 40 grams per mole. So some of the substances are there, you must just know them like that. Uh, it's part of the learning, you get? Right, what do we need? Okay, number of moles is given in the question. So N of sodium hydroxide equal to 0 0.128 mole. What is our working formula? Oh. N equal to mass on molar mass. By this time, we are looking for mass. So we have to change subjects. So make M the subject. So if I make M of NaOH the subject, I'm going to have N times molar mass. Simple. So N is 0 0.128 times molar mass 40. And that gives me O. Oh, 0 0.128 times 40. That gives me. What did you get? Okay. 5.12. That's great. Clap for yourself. Excellent. Okay. 5.12 grams. Yeah, we are looking for mass. So, right unit grams. Is that okay? Yes. Any concerns or any questions? Now let me draw your attention to the first definition of molar mass. <laughs> it's a mass of one mole of a substance. So it means that I ask you to calculate the mass of one mole of a given substance. I'm indirectly asking you to calculate the molar mass. So, mass of one mole of a given substance is the mass of the formula unit. So, as we have seen already, if I say the mass, the formula mass of NaOH, so formula mass of NaOH is equal to 40 grams. This one, molar mass, is 40 grams per mole. So, P 
pair means one as i said pair means one so it means that one more of sodium hydroxide contains 40 grams you see it so if i if i say calculate the mass of one more of calcium carbonate all we are asking you to do is to sum up the atomic masses of the atoms making up calcium carbonate that's all so let's see very very simple it's just like what we have been doing you see so calculate the mass of one mole of CaCO3 relative atomic mass Ca is 40 Ca is 12 O is 16 so what do I do? sum up just like calculating molar mass because we say mass per mole so determine the mass of the formula unit and that is all about it so the mass of one mole of that will give me 40 plus 12 plus 3 times 16, 48. That gives me 100 grams. So the mass of one mole of calcium carbonate is 100 grams. That is the mass of one mole of calcium carbonate. So you see. So if I say calculate the mass of one mole of NaCl, you tell me it is 58.5 grams. Is it okay? So take note of that. Now let's move on moving on moving on moving on the next thing molar gas volume vm variable right for a definition volume of one mole of gas under specified conditions these conditions are temperature and then pressure or we can also say volume occupied by one mole of ideal gas at standard conditions. So it is a constant set at 22.4 dm cubed per mole. So the moment we say per mole, it means that the molar gas volume is molar quantity at standard temperature and pressure. Or at room temperature and pressure, the gas of one mole will occupy 24 dm cubed. What else can we say? A dozen of handkerchiefs, 12 pieces. So one mole of every gas contains that 6.02 times 10 power. 23 molecules. Is it okay? So, as we from definition, we deduce a working formula. We are talking about molar gas volume being measured in dm cubed per mole. dm cubed volume of a physical, the unit of a physical quantity, volume. So, that's V. So, Vm equal to V. Per mole, one, so divided by mole. Mole is N. So Vm equal to V on N. If we want to make N the subject, then we can have N equal to volume on molar gas volume. This is our working formula. You see? Okay. So it's as simple as that one. Let's do some small mathematics simple mathematics
simple mathematics. What is the volume occupied by 0 0.281 mole of oxygen gas? So, VM is 22.4 dm cubed per mole. So what do I do? Our working formula, n equal to v on vm. What are we looking for? We are looking for volume. What do we have? n is given. Vm is given, so make V the subject. We have already learned how to change subject. That is why I brought this one straightforward. So if we can transfer knowledge, then changing subject is simple. Therefore, if we are looking for volume, we are going to have volume of O2 equal to N times Vm. So do the substitution. N is given in the question as 0 0.281 times vm vm is also given as 22.4 at stp so what would that be 0 0.281 times 22.4 what would be the answer what did you get if you are really involved we have 6.29 dm keep so if you are following carefully, we have 6.29 dm cubed. Is that simple? Yes, very, very simple, straightforward. Just identify your variables, do your substitution and evaluation. You are good to go. Can we do another one? Yes, because it's so interesting doing it. So let's do another one. Yes. Okay, this time round, give me a value and give me a substance. Value, yes, give me n. So n is, okay, 0 0.111 more. Okay. So, calculate. Volume of hydrogen gas if it's amount of substance is zero point one 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 more. You have given me that value. Okay, so Vm is given as 22.4 dm cubed. Working formula N equal to V on Vm. What are we looking for? We are looking for volume of H2. Okay. What do we have? N is given. Vm is given. So V of H2 will give me N Vm. So do your substitution. 0 0.111 times 22.4. And that gives me 0 0.111 times 22.4. That will give me... What do you have? Yes. 2.49 nine dm kept so what is the number of moles occupied by nitrogen what is the number of moles of hydrogen uh, oxygen no no we have talked about oxygen already we talk about 
hydrogen let's talk about a different gas give me a gas nitrogen gas okay so okay so we have give me a volume 30 cm cubed okay okay so let's calculate the number of moles of nitrogen gas yes okay so the volume occupied by n2 is 30 cm cubed what is the amount of substance here to bracket bus bracket vm is giving us 22.4 dm cubed what do i need we are looking for n of n2 we don't know what do we have we have volume of n2 is 30 cm cubed vm is given so what do we do take notes vm is in dm cubed and then the volume given is in cm cubed so you have to change so that the unit will be the same because the unit must cancel out leaving more so which one will you change change the 22.4 dm to cm or change the 30 cm to dm right so if we are changing the 30 cm to dm then we should have zero divided by thousand so we're gonna have 0 0.030 dm cubed so we can do substitution so n of nitrogen gas equal to volume 0 0.030 on molar gas volume 22.4 and then that gives me if you are following carefully then you should have that what do you get three significant figures yes so 1.34 times 10 power negative 3 what will be the unit more yes more so more why that's fine well done but let's connect let's connect molar mass this one and then molar gas volume ah what are we connecting yes watch carefully watch carefully watch carefully what are we connecting we said that one more of a substance has eight formula mass one more of a substance has its formula mass so that is in grams and then we also said that one more of a gas occupies 22.4 dm cubed at stp eh, let's connect so if one more of a substance has its formula mass and then one more of a gas occupies 22.4 dm cube at stp then watch this what is the mass of one mole of oxygen gas so one mole of O2 is equivalent to 
32 grams because 32 grams per mole is the molar mass of O2. So one mole of that is that one. And then one mole of oxygen gas occupies 22.4 dm cubed at STP. You get it. So one more has this mass, one more has this volume. Then it means that connecting, we can say that 32 grams of oxygen gas occupies 22.4 dm cubed at STP. You get that? Yes. So if we give you the mass, you ask yourself, this mass, is it the molar mass or not? If it is the molar mass, then it will occupy that 22.4 dm kit. So example, what is the volume occupied by 28 grams of nitrogen gas? You see, so nitrogen gas is diatomic, so N2, and the relative atomic mass of nitrogen is 14. So the molar mass of nitrogen gas will give us 28 grams per mole. So one mole has a mass of 28 grams. Therefore, the mass, the volume occupied by 28 grams of nitrogen gas will be 22.4 dm cubed. Is that interesting? Yes. So that is the connection. Some questions are there. You don't need to do any calculation. Just connect and then you are gone. The third molar quantity we want to look at is the Avogadro constant. So Avogadro constant, number of atoms, molecules, ions, electrons, or entities in 12.00 grams of carbon-12 isotope, or number of entities in one mole of a substance. And of course, the value we have seen already as that. Or one mole of a substance contains this number of entities. So it means that one mole of oxygen gas contains 6.02 times 10 power 23 oxygen molecules and so on and so forth. So from the definition, we can say that Avogadro constant equal to number of, we use uppercase N, capital N. And then, of course, moles, we have already talked about that. So we have big N on small n. So if we want to make small n the subject, then we can have number on Avogadro number. N sub A or L. That's all. Can we connect again? Let's connect so that we can put all of them together. So we said that one mole of a substance contains this. So it means that one mole of NaCl will contain 6.02 times 10 power 23 NaCl particles. And of course, the NaCl mass of one mole will be 58.5. Therefore, 58.5 grams of NaCl will contain 6.02 times 10 power 23. You see the connections. So if you connect them like that, when you are given a question, you can also use ratio and proportions to get it done. Right. So if we put all of them together, then do not forget this. Always remember this. N equal to number of particles or entities divided by Avogadro number is the same as mass on molar mass 
is the same as volume or molar gas volume and when we bring in the Faraday's constant then we can also add this one I there yes so that's it on this this far we have come now all we have to do is to be able to apply the more you apply the more you become used to it. simple simple formulas keep this one for yourself and always you will be able to solve any question that comes your way take note from the connections we can also use ratio and proportion to calculate that one now let's see how we are going to apply more questions we have solved a lot already but let's put them together in various ways and see how best we are going to handle handle them okay so there are a lot of questions out there you gonna look for them and then try your hands and that will be fine with you okay so this far time will allow us once again i am wisdom agbesinyala many call me with the one until i come your way continue enjoying chemistry have a nice afternoon bye bye Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.